Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk you through a speed time graph question. Now there are four parts to this question. In the first part we have to find the total distance travelled. In the second part the average speed for the whole journey. Next we have to find the distance travelled in the first 10 seconds. And finally the acceleration when time equals 20 seconds. Okay, so for the first part where it asks us to work out the total distance travelled, what you need to do with a speed time graph is work out the total area underneath the graph, okay? So it says the total distance travelled, so the entire area here. So there's more than one way of doing this question. You could split this shape up into shapes that you recognise, like a triangle, a rectangle and a triangle. You can, however, do it in one whole go. You can find the area of a trapezium, okay? Because this quadrilateral shape with one set of parallel sides is called a trapezium. Now, to work out the area of a trapezium, you have to add the parallel sides together. So I'm gonna call them A and B. Then you have to multiply by the height of the shape. Okay, so this distance here. And then you have to divide by two. So if I add the two parallel sides together in this trapezium, the length of the base here is 30. And the length of this parallel side here is 10, because the difference between 5 and 15 is 10. So first you add those together. Next you multiply by the height, which is 30. And then you always divide by 2 when you're working out the area of a trapezium. So if I work that out, 30 plus 10 is 40. If I divide that by 2, I get 20. And then if I times 20 by 30, I get 600. So the units for this distance are metres. Because here we know that the velocity or the speed is in metres per second. Here the time is in seconds, but because it's metres per second, it means the distance here is 600 metres. Okay, on to the next part. Now we have to work out the average speed for the whole journey. So if you know your form formulas, you should know that um, speed equals distance divided by time. Okay, we just worked out the total distance travelled. Okay, it was 600. So you just divide your distance, 600, by the time, which is 30 seconds. Okay, so if you divide those, uh, the zeros cancel, and 60 divided by 3 is just 20. And again, for the units, we just look here. Okay, this is in metres per second, so so is the average speed. Okay, so if you don't know that formula, you need to learn that off by heart. Um, I teach my students this triangle here, connecting speed, distance and time. Distance being at the top and speed and time underneath. So that if you're working out distance, you know you have to multiply speed and time. If you're finding time, you do distance divided by speed. And then finally, like the one we've just done, if you're working out speed, you have to do distance divided by time. Okay, I teach my students to remember D goes on top because D is first in the alphabet. Okay, now for part C, the distance travelled in just the first 10 seconds. Okay, so here's 5, here's 15. We know this here is the 10 second point. So similar to part A, you have to work out the area. But this time, instead of working out the area of this whole shape, we only need to work out the area of this triangle and this rectangle or just like before we can work out the area of the trapezium okay because this shape is a trapezium it has one set of parallel sides okay so i'm going to use that formula again i'm going to start by adding together the parallel sides so this side is 10 and this distance here is just 5 so 10 plus 5 the height is the same as earlier it's just 30 and then likewise, we always divide by 2 when we're working out the area of a trapezium. Okay, so this time, if I work this out, 10 plus 5 is uh, 15. Okay, and if you work that out, either in your head or in the calculator, you should get 225. And again, it's distance. So just like before, the distance, the units here were meters. Same thing for this one, okay? So it's 225 metres. 
Be careful to read the questions. Sometimes it might ask for your answer in kilometers and then you would need to adjust that accordingly. If it was in kilometers, you would need to divide your answer by a thousand because there are 1000 meters in one kilometer. Okay, so to work out the last part of this question, finding the acceleration when time is equal to 20 seconds. Look for 20 on your graph. So here's 20 seconds, okay, this part here. And you need to work out the gradient of the line, okay? So we need to work out how steep this line is. I'm going to use a method called rise over run to work out the gradient. If you're not familiar with this method and you don't know how to work out the gradient, I do have another lesson on that, so check that out first. Now, to work out rise over run, or to use this method, I need to choose two points along this line. And it doesn't matter which two points you choose, although we're a bit limited on this, uh, this graph question because we don't have all the units here, okay? We don't know how um, high all of these points are. So I'm going to choose this point here, 15.30, and this one down here, 30.0. So rise over run means you have to subtract the y values, okay, so that's the rise, and then you divide by the run, which is the difference in the x values. So here are the y values, 30 and 0, so if I subtract those first, I get 30 minus 0, then I need to subtract the x values, so 15 take away 30. Just be careful when you do these subtractions, notice how I did the top point minus the bottom point for both. Make sure you're consistent with your subtractions. You will get the same answer if you do these ones minus the ones up here, but make sure you do the same for both pairs of values, okay? So if we work that out, 30 take away zero is just 30. 15 minus 30 is negative 15, and that simplifies to negative two. So the units for acceleration are meters per second squared, Notice how in the question it asks for acceleration. This is the acceleration, this is the final answer. However, if the question had asked for deceleration, you would need to change the sign of your answer. So, I hope that clears up some of your questions on speed time graphs. If you need some more practice, go check out my other lessons. I do have some more on speed time graphs.